Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and the ranking member uh, for this hearing today. And I want to particularly thank our witnesses. Thank you for your service. Uh, thank you uh, as well to all the men and women who you work with uh, each and every day. Uh, before I begin my questions, though, I do also want to express my profound concern about the turmoil at the topmost levels of the Department of Homeland Security. The department is tasked with the vital mission of securing the nation from the many threats we face. And the type of turnover we are seeing right now presents a direct threat to the ability to effectively carry out that mission. We need to see qualified leaders put forward who have the experience needed to keep Americans safe and who will also stand up to the president if necessary to uphold the rule of law and the values that make us strong. I want to turn now to a question to Mr. Howe and Mr. Chirindolo because last Congress we passed and the President signed a bill that would provide more technology for border agents to, to use so that they could detect fentanyl at the border. Uh, last spring when I was at the border I heard during my visit that the agents still did not have all the access to that equipment. Former Secretary Nielsen stated that this was unacceptable when she testified before this committee last May. So to both of you, can one of you update the committee on how the Interdict Act implementation is going now? Do our agents have the technology they need to keep them safe as they're detecting fentanyl? Thank you for the question, Senator. The $564 million that you sp speak of, yep. the NII enhancements for FY19, that's going to really change the way we do business on the southwest border. Okay. It's really going to transform our capability to scan more vehicles and more trucks, uh, con considerably more than what we're doing today. So um, it's going to take some time to, to, to work with the vendors to purchase and get them into place, but it really is going to transform wh where, where we're doing uh, the interdiction. We, we know that through our mail facilities yep. uh, that we're, we're seeing fentanyl, so the 45 million that we received also, yep. of FY19, uh, will allow us to enhance our NII, our non-intrusive inspection technology, in both our mail facilities and our express confinements. Okay, so. but what, so it is still a work in progress, is what you're telling me, that we don't have all the technology that is provided by the funding yet? We're working through it. It's going to take some time. Okay. Mr. Chirindello, do you have anything to add? Senator, the only thing I would add that any of that is welcome to us because many times those seizures at the border are the start of an investigation right. for both DEA and HSI. Um, but um, we, would in, uh, we would support any advanced technology that, that can be given to our colleagues on the border, uh, but those wouldn't specifically apply to DEA. Okay. Uh, thank you. I, I am still concerned that we're, we don't have as much equipment as we need. I'm very concerned about the safety of the people on the front lines, fentanyl as we all know, is so dangerous even to the touch. Um, so uh, I will look forward to following up uh, with the agency about how we can accelerate this. Um, Commander White, I wanted to follow up a little bit with you on the discussion that you've just been having about um, the family separation policy and the efforts that your agency has made to reunite families and children. Uh, you talked about the numbers in the Ms. L case, the class of, of uh, individuals represented by the ACLU. But we also know that there are other children, and you just mentioned it in your testimony, who before um, the policy was announced were apparently separated from their families. Um, when you appeared before this committee last year and just now, you were very clear about the impact of family separation uh, on children. Um, that children are traumatized this and it can suffer long-term psychological damage from this kind of separation. And I thank you for your clarity and your honesty on that issue. But that's why I was so troubled to see your statement a few days ago uh, stating that it could take two years to identify what could be thousands of children who were separated from their families. Can you tell me why it will take so long and what we can do to speed this up? Uh, yes, Senator. So uh, what the Senator is referring to is uh, my declaration and the uh, plan which I developed and which the government has uh, submitted uh, to Judge Shabra in the Southern District of California on how we would do that identification. I want to be clear. The, the one to two year time frame is if we reviewed all of the approximately 47,000 children who were referred by DHS starting on July 1st, 2017, and had already been discharged to a family member or otherwise appropriately discharged by the date of the court hearing. 
the plan, if, and this is in the declaration, is designed to accelerate that process. I don't know that it will, but it represents my personal belief of the best, most effective way to find the children, to identify which of the s children that were discharged were separated, and to do so as fast as is possible. But the answer to your, to your question is because it is 47,000 children. They have all been discharged. And uh, there is no list. This is the fundamental reality. The reason that it is challenging now is because there is no list of separated children. We must identify them. So we will use, uh, if the judge approves it, uh, the methods that I've outlined. And if he doesn't approve it without getting too much in litigation, then I guess we will all be back to the drawing board. I believe that the plan, which is in my declaration, is the best way to find this, uh, to identify who the kids were. That's why. Uh, yes or no, would more staff help you do it faster? I don't believe that staffing is the, is the key variable. Okay. Are the, would you please uh, commit to submitting uh, to me uh, any recommendations you could make in terms of resources or other things Congress could provide to you that would help you speed that process up? Yes, ma'am, I'll make that commitment. As a, as a reminder, this is before the judge currently, and I, I'm I, awaiting I his direction. I understand that. Um, and Commander White, I just also wanted to, uh, again, thank you for being clear about the impact of what has been an inhumane and un-American policy of family separation. And I take it from your comments earlier in your exchange with Senator Portman that uh, you do not support reinstating this policy. Uh, I would never support the use of family separation, uh, the systematic traumatization of children as a tool of immigration policy, but it's not about what I support. Senator, it's about what you and your colleagues support. And it is up to you to define the conditions under which a child may be separated. Congress hasn't done that, and you need to. Thank you. I, I appreciate that very much, but I also appreciate that uh, I believe that this administration should not move forward with family separation. I believe there are other ways we can secure our borders, and uh, I appreciate very much the input and the feedback uh, that you have all provided to us today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Chair, and I have uh, a question I'll submit to the record for you about southbound uh, trafficking of guns and cash uh, going over from the United States to Mexico. Uh, I'd like to follow up with you about how we can uh, slow that kind of traffic. We'd be happy to get you the information, Senator. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Langford, and I was told the delay.